but uh, I'm Steve Hagan, and uh, from the standpoint of uh, why should why should people in Northeast Wisconsin be interested in an in initiative that, that is going to come to fruition in a place like Houston, Texas? Um, in, in the medical world, there are four levels of care that people can go through. I'm, I'm a primary care doctor. The secondary level of care is if I send you to one of our local cardiologists or an orthopedic surgeon or an oncologist, you need uh, more specialized services that I can, than I can provide. Tertiary care centers are places like UW-Madison, like Children's Hospital of Wisconsin, or the Medical College in, in Milwaukee. And when even the university medical centers don't know what else to do, they send you to a quaternary care center. And for uh, Cancer-related illnesses, uh, MD Anderson is the number one quaternary care center in the entire world, and it has been for more than 10 years. They actually keep lists of those things. Um, so being that sort of a magnet for people of all ages who are uh, battling cancer, uh, just in, in that age group that we intend to serve between the ages of 17 to 18 and up, upwards of uh, 35 years old, uh, they have more than 7,000 patient stays at their facility per year, which is like 200 new people coming to their facility every day, all year long. And that right now there is no place for, for those people to stay if they have not made those arrangements. Now a lot of people going to MD Anderson are, are going to MD Anderson from maybe that area of 100 to 250 miles around because they're the people who know the most about MD Anderson. That's where their reputation is the strongest. Uh, but there, is a, there are a huge number of people who have to travel long distances to get there and, and even from outside this country. Um, at any one time, there are more than 70,000 adolescents and young adults in this country who are battling cancer. Um, unfortunately, um, there are some cancers that are unique to that age group. They're cancers that are not very well understood because they're very uncommon. If you take an uncommon cancer, it, it's difficult to build up the numbers in your uh, in your drug trials and in your treatment trials to even find out if these things work or not. Uh, there's been a lot of research money dedicated to pediatric cancer. There's been a lot of research money dedicated to cancers that occur in older individuals because every decade that goes by, cancer becomes more and more common. Um, as a result of that, survival rates for pediatric cancer have steadily improved over the last three to four decades. Uh, cancer survival rates for things like breast cancer, colon cancer, um, uh, the more common uh, adulthood cancers have also improved. Over that same period of time, the survival rates for adolescents and young adults have remained very stagnant. Uh, they, they really have not improved. Some of that has to do with uh, the absence of screening programs for those cancers, uh, the belief that I'm young, this can't happen to me, uh, the belief on the part of doctors that this young person sitting in front of me who looks so vital, how could something really serious be wrong with that individual? And if it doesn't cross your mind, you're not going to order the test. So diagnosis is often delayed, and then the disease is often in, in an advanced stage. Um, speaking just from my standpoint as, as a physician, I see that people that have a community to rely on do better, whether they're dealing with their congestive heart failure, or they're dealing with their juvenile diabetes, or, or they're dealing with a diagnosis of cancer. And I think that's true uh, across the, the age groups. And um, uh, so for, for both the families and also for the individuals uh, who, are, who are the patients, uh, I think to have a location where they feel supported, where they feel that they can just de-stress and uh, have some distraction from what they're going to have to deal with tomorrow or from what they had to deal with yesterday. Um, uh, we, we know that the outcome is better for people that have a, a community and, and, and their beliefs and, and their support systems to fall back on. Uh, so so I, I would be thrilled to be part of an initiative that, uh, that builds a house like this in Houston and, uh, and, and even beyond that. So, uh, what else?
what I've what I've told a lot of the individuals that I've invited to our visioning events is that I would like to know is what you know and who you know that might help us spread the word, that might help us raise funds, that uh, might help us connect with people eventually that might benefit from, from our services. Um, uh, because it's, it's never too soon to identify individuals that, uh, that might need some assistance right now. They're, they're not in the greatest position to, to provide that, that assistance, but uh, um, I think we'd always be willing to make some some calls and, and try to find contacts that could do that. So I, I really appreciate everybody's uh, presence here tonight. Um, uh, if I, yeah, if I may, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and jump on. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Stephen. Uh, 